Hey everyone, welcome back to Topher Drives, where this morning you're riding along with me during my morning commute in this, the 2023 Toyota Prius Prime. So if you're wondering what it's like to roll out of bed and jump into your brand new Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid, well, today we're going to find out. I first saw this new generation Prius about a year ago when they kind of had it still under the wraps. Toyota brought us into this very secret room with no windows and showed us this shape and i could not believe my eyes thinking that wow i actually really properly like the way that that prius looks and it wasn't until just a couple of days ago that i finally got to drive this car this is technically one model year old this is a 2023 Prius Prime, but I'm happy that I was finally able to get back behind the wheel. And I wanted to shoot this video today because I feel like this is important for Prius buyers because this is essentially what the Prius is built to do. It's built to make the commute and uh, we'll see how this thing does today as far as efficiency, as far as being comfortable. We'll see some amenities inside this car. And before we jump in and get going, I am actually going somewhere real today. We're going on a genuine commute. I'm going out to Vintique Motors to do some bring a trailer photography. So the Prius will be assisting me in my commute this morning. Now, the biggest complaints I've seen about the new Prius are cargo space and rear seat room. Um, and I guess I can kind of understand that. We don't have the largest surface here in the back to load things in and out. We have a small amount of storage underneath, but in this case, that kind of just holds our charging cable. And I've got my snow scraper in here as well today. And actually, before we jump into the car, I want to show you guys something that stood out to me the most about this Prius when it was dropped off in my driveway and I went to lock it for the first time. It's like it plays the first two notes to jingle bells or something. It's a very unique lock and unlock noise, but I suppose Toyota's been using the same couple of beeps since the 90s. So I guess it was time to elevate that a bit. And they've done that with the Prius. Today we are running on some Toyos. Again, I was driving something last week. Oh, the Kia EV9. Or no, it wasn't. It was the Mazda CX-90 had some Toyos on it. Uh, and these are 195 section tires on a 19 inch wheel. So we have some very skinny little eco all season tires to help us get along very economically. We also have a solar roof on this Toyota Prius Prime. And uh, well, all in all, this is a $42,000 Prius. This is an XSE Premium. So this is a loaded trim to begin with. And this has just about every option. Solar roof, heated rear seats, technology pack, uh, camera rear view mirror, which you do need, and I'll show you that once we get in. But uh, keep that in mind today as we go along. This is definitely not a cheap car by any means. The Prius Prime does start at around 32 grand, so this loaded XSE Premium is going on about 10 grand more than a base model. Okay, so here's the most controversial part about the new Prius that is the back seat. Let's jump in and see if it's really so bad. You do have to contort yourself a little bit getting in, so I wouldn't necessarily say it's easy to get in and out of, you know. But once you're back here, it's honestly fine. You can see we have a little divot here in this roof to expand our headroom just a bit, but unfortunately when you make a car look cool like this with the swooping roof line, you do always kind of give up some of that headroom in the back seat and the story's no different here in the new Prius. So what do you have back here? Well, we have an armrest with some cup holders, some really scratchy plastic materials. And in this car, we have optional heated rear seats, which have one setting either on or off. We have a plug, we have some USB-C ports and we have one seat back pocket. So if you are commuting with some other people, if you're carpooling or something, it might be a little bit tight in the back seat for adults, but if you're driving your kids to school, I think they'll be just fine back here. Give you a peek up front. I suppose it's worth mentioning that as far as leg room goes, I do have plenty of room as a five foot 11 person sat behind my driving position. I've got a pretty good amount of leg room. It's headroom where this thing lacks. I do feel like I have to be a bit slouched back here. So if you're over six foot, it might be a little tight in the back of the new Prius, but that's no surprise looking at the outside of the car. But I really do think that they did a proper job styling this. I mean, I don't know how you could get much cooler with a Prius 
This is now, I want to say, the fifth generation Prius, and it has never looked anything like this, obviously. So let's talk about powertrain. This is the Prius Prime. So this is the plug-in hybrid. Of course, you can have just a traditional hybrid as well. This one, of course, costs you a little bit more for the plug-in aspect. So under the hood, we have a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. This is of course assisted by an electric motor. Combined power output is 220 horsepower. And that power is all sent to the front wheels via a CVT. Now 220 horsepower is honestly pretty decent in this car and I was surprised when I got on it for the first time. It's got some good torque and that's what I like about plug-in hybrids and hybrids in general is they do always have that torque to assist the usually anemic little naturally aspirated four cylinder. So 220 horsepower combined does nice things in this car. And uh, we'll show you that once we go out onto the road. Zero W16 oil, which is essentially water running through this two liter. Tiny little air box, look at it. No engine cover, no frills, nothing. A little bit of sound or uh, fire resistant sound slash sound deadening stuff, but overall not a lot hybrid reborn there's lots of little buzzwords on this car it's like they had a team of millennials designing this which honestly i wouldn't be surprised if they did i'll show you the hello did i put it in the wrong hole that is possible there we go okay let's shut the hood and never open that again check out these wipers they move in a very untraditional way to wipe this massive windshield let's hop in and get going because i'm probably at this point running late we have a black leatherette interior in here kind of a thin material honestly i don't really see these seats holding up super well you can see when i press down on this kind of how thin that is these are heated and cooled and they're trimmed in red which looks nice we have a leather wrapped with red stitching steering wheel. We have red trim on the dashboard, all of which looks pretty nice in the cabin of this Prius Prime. Let's fire this thing up. And something else untraditional is the way that they have set up the cabin in this new Prius. Now this was kind of foreshadowed by the BZ4X and Subaru Solterra, this far forward steering wheel and far away cluster that isn't necessarily looked at through the steering wheel. Definitely a bit of a strange feeling in here. The steering wheel is also smaller than a traditional wheel. And I suppose that's kind of the only untraditional thing, but it makes some sense when you think about the space in here. This car has a very short hood. Uh, in turn, we have a very large dashboard and things are kind of spread out. And I suppose this probably also has something to do with safety, having to have a certain amount of metal and material between the steering wheel and the front end of the car, or between you and the front end of the car, rather. So I think things are set up in here. It doesn't take too long to get used to. And I actually really enjoyed this setup in the BZ4X. The only thing that I don't like, and this is very unique to me, uh, is that with POV, I generally have to have the steering wheel up slightly so you all can see the steering wheel and the cluster, which means I've had to put this up today so you all can see it. And uh, in turn, I can't really see the cluster, but we'll just do some guessing today and hopefully I don't end up being left lane Prius going 65. In fact, it would probably be quite the opposite. I'd be left lane Prius going 85, getting pulled over and not actually making it to my destination. So what do we have up here for storage? Well, we have two cup holders for your morning coffee here. We have a center console, which isn't very big, but it does fit a hat. We have a wireless charger for your phone right here. And it does hold your phone in, but like most Toyotas, it doesn't really work properly. Um, so it's trying to open up my Apple wallet currently which I don't want it to do. And uh, we have this little hidden compartment here, which you lift this up and this whole piece actually comes out to reveal the um, hashtag hidden compartment. <laughs> so, you know, I just, um, 
it's fun. You know, I, I, I really, I shouldn't be negative about this because we always complain about how cars are bland and boring. And then when some millennial on the design team puts hashtag hidden compartment, I go, oh yes, that's very silly. But you know what? I appreciate it, millennial. Thank you for putting that in there to give us a little treat when storing things in the Prius. And you know what? Maybe I'll put my phone in the hashtag hidden compartment so you all don't have to stare at it while we go down the road. Guys, it's a few days later and I found another one. Hashtag wireless charger. We also have two USB-C ports. We have a little uh, traditional car charger port there. Um, someone yelled at me in one of the other videos for not calling that a cigarette lighter because cars back in the day all had a cigarette lighter. So I guess if you wanna install a cigarette lighter on that, you could. We have a physical climate control panel, heated and cooled seats on this XSE Premium. We also have the larger infotainment screen that comes standard on the XSE Premium, but it is an option on the XSE and lower trims. Prius Prime gets about 44 miles of electric range. So in most cases, you can do your commute on electric only. And I think that's the biggest pro and the biggest draw to the Prius Prime is if you have a commute, shoot, if you have a commute that's 20 miles each way, you can go to and from work all on electric power. Today we have a 96% charge. I plugged this thing in last night and we'll use our electric to get us to the highway. And then once we get on the highway, we'll press this little button right here that will switch us over to HV mode and use our two liter internal combustion engine. Just because I usually don't like to waste my electric range on the highway, but you'd be able to do whatever you want on your commute. I'm also just curious to see what sort of fuel economy we get combined. So we're gonna reset this. All right, we're gonna switch to Waze once we get going a little bit here. This is the kind of standard shifter that comes on a lot of the new Toyota and Lexus products. I wanna say this was pioneered by the LC500. Here's our reverse camera. And we have the 360 camera on this Prius Prime. This is an option. This does not come standard. This is on the uh, optional technology pack. Um, they call it something different. I'm forgetting what they call it. Command camera. I don't know. I'll put, it, I'll put it right here, whatever they call their 360 camera. Another thing I find really appealing about this Prius is just how nimble and small it feels. And they've really been able to communicate that by putting this tiny little steering wheel in here, but also giving it a very quick and light steering rack. You have this feeling that you're kind of able to just zip around and maneuver around things in this car. And that is a nice, refreshing feeling in a market that is absolutely flooded with SUVs. Being able to still have the option to buy a small car if you're just commuting alone or commuting with one person. On electric power only, we have about 90 horsepower, so enough to get you going. Feel through that brake pedal is nice. I've been driving in B to get some regen going. There's our cross traffic alert. This is flat out in electric mode. There's 50 and up to 55 nicely for us. Are you guys also bothered by cross traffic alert? I just feel like it's the most pointless thing ever because it doesn't ding at you until the cars have already passed. So I don't entirely understand the point of that. Maybe it's to keep you from nodding off when you're sitting at intersections, when you're sleepy on your commute, I don't know. Inputs in this car are all pretty nice. It's a little bit busy up here. We have a lot of buttons all laid out very closely on the steering wheel and the cluster also, it just has a lot going on. And you're of course able to switch this to whatever you want. You can have your trip computer, you can have uh, all of your driver aids, you messages, there's your um, MPG, you can see what you're listening to. There's also a spot where you can get into a crash trying to show you everything in this cluster. You can look at your eco score. We're not doing very well today. In fact, we're failing 35%. That's enough. EV driving ratio. And you can also see the power generated by your $600 optional solar roof. <laughs> so if you want to have that up there, you are able to do so. 
use our camera rear view mirror today. That is nice in the Prius because you can see rear visibility is not the best without it. We have a very small little rear window. All right, before we jump on the highway, I gotta show you guys the cornering on this car. This thing does a pretty dang good job, honestly. They've set this car up nicely. It drives great. I, I have really no complaints as far as driving goes. Let's put it into hybrid mode. We also have a number of different drive modes. We have sport mode, custom, normal, and eco. We're gonna run in sport mode for a second. And I did warm the engine up this morning uh, before I got to the parking lot to film. So the engine does have some heat in it. So don't get mad at me for getting on it here around this corner. But I want to show you guys what 220 horsepower looks like. And 60. <laughs> it kind of gets down. We're going to leave this in hybrid mode and we'll go back to normal, but we're going to jump on the highway here. So we have a 19 inch wheel on this car, of course, on the XSE Premium. On any higher trim level, you're always gonna have larger wheels. So this is gonna affect our range slightly and also our ride, but overall, uh, they've got this car damped nicely. It's not, you know, it, the car still handles nicely, but it isn't over damped. It's not bouncing you around. Road noise as well, not too bad with these Eco tires on here. As you guys saw earlier, no problem at all getting this thing merged onto the highway. I'm hoping this car kind of breaks the stereotype of left lane Prius, because if this is left lane Prius, it'll be going 90 and passing everybody. That's right, you cannot use cruise control when you're in B mode, you have to be in D. One press of this button here on the right hand side puts you into your cruise control, sets it at whatever speed you're going. Right now we're set at 77. So far doing 41.7 MPG. EPA rates this Prius Prime at 48 MPG combined. Give you guys a second to observe our NVH. This is of course a very slippery car, so we're not gonna have a ton of wind noise in here. Let's go for a pass. Adjust our cruise speed here. You can also switch uh, in and out of adaptive cruise mode. You can adjust your distance, which I can't see. There we go. Excuse me, having to look over the steering wheel to look at the cluster. <laughs> Normally it's not like this. It's just because I'm filming a video. So ergonomically, if you're a normal person that doesn't have a camera on their face, this will be just fine for you. I think a lot of people also have this misconception that Priuses are kind of just like tin cans and little throwaway cars. But they've actually made something quite nice here with this new gen. I don't really have anything in here that's disgusting me. The cheapest materials do lie on the door panels and that likely has to do with the fact that these door panels don't change regardless of what trim you get. In fact, I feel like I could kind of just remove this window switch. You can see how much I could lift that window switch up out of there. So. Not the best materials on the door panel, but as far as like the dashboard goes, the screen, everything here in the center, we have a bit of piano black, but everything feels nice. Turn signal stocks. The leather on the steering wheel is beautiful. It's nice and soft. It almost feels like Lexus leather, although I'm sure it's not because I guarantee it isn't real leather being in a Prius because we have to be eco. Look at the way these wipers move. Yeah, the one on the right has to kind of do a little bit of a twist to get up to where it should be. Not as cool as the old mono wiper you'd get on the old Mercedes Benzes, or I suppose the one on the Cybertruck. That's still kind of nice. Let's see our sprayer action here. I like the one touch for the mist. I think maybe this might be a bit of a misrepresentation because admittedly earlier when I left the house I was also suspiciously getting exactly 41.7 mpg um, 
and now with a bit of time on the highway between gas and electric we are still getting 41.7 mpg so don't know if that's completely accurate in this xse premium trim we get a jbl sound system standard fare for premium audio in toyotas we get jbl and it's all right you know we'll we'll test it out here in a little bit i'm getting distracted and i'm gonna miss my exit we have to do some prius related things here on on today's trip let's jump back into sport mode for this ramp grab some regen here Guys, look at this. <laughs> Dude, this thing on like a proper set of tires. <laughs> it would be excellent. And then you've got the torque to pull you out of the corner. Yes, Prius. Yes. Breaking stereotypes. <laughs> this is honestly a fun to drive nimble little package I like the steering wheel size I like the weight of this steering rack it's got a bit of body roll <laughs> but <laughs> and while we do this long stretch of highway why don't we test out this JBL sound system oh no all right let's turn this down we're gonna have to skip through a few songs it's one thing about Toyotas is when you're on Spotify, they don't let you see your whole thing. So, almost. Hey, there we go. So we have a volume knob way across the car, but I think it's because this is meant for the passenger to use if they want to adjust. Your adjustment is right here on the steering wheel on the lower left-hand side. good noise from this JBL. Now JBLs are never mind-blowing in Toyotas, but what they do well is give good power. They give good feeling through the seat, really good bass bumps, and they're not really great with complex music, so if you played something that had a little bit more complexity, some, some higher highs, I don't think it would sound great on this system, but it gets the job done, and for this kind of small, compact little cabin here, I think it sounds pretty good. So how comfortable is the driver's compartment itself? The seat itself, pretty squishy. I showed you guys the material on it earlier. While it is a very soft material, I don't really see it holding up in the long run. That doesn't really necessarily have anything to do with comfort. One thing I don't love is you have this really hard material here right by where your right leg rests. Now, I don't know if you guys drive like this, but when I've got cruise control set, I tend to kind of rest my right leg on the console. And a lot of manufacturers have a little soft piece of material down here, but not on the Prius. It is just hard plastic. So your leg is resting on that. Alternatively, you could lift it up and kind of have it here, but then it touches the steering wheel and that isn't really the best thing ever. On the left-hand side, we do actually have a bit of a soft piece of material here where you can rest your leg and that feels nice. Elbow comfort, this is kind of hard. This is a little bit softer here, so your left elbow is pretty comfortable. Your right elbow, not so much. So 50% elbow comfort here in the Prius. Seating position is fine. Massive windshield, you can't see the hood. So if you're somebody that 
likes to see out over the car, you're going to have to lift your, lift your, oh yeah, no, I'm just touching the ceiling. I don't think, no matter what position you're in, I don't think you're seeing the front of that hood. So if you have trouble placing the front end of cars, this may not be the car for you. But the good thing about it is it is a very small front end. So, and we have decent enough ground clearance to where you're probably not going to run this thing onto a parking block and ruin your front bumper. <gasps> 41.6. I've doubted it. Maybe it is working properly. We dropped by 0.1 of an MPG. Let's see if our solar roof has generated any power. No, 0.0, .0 miles generated. Yesterday, the sun was out. It did about 0.2 of a mile. I think my favorite part about this Prius is that it just feels like a little space pod. Like you feel one with the driving position in this car. You know, I don't want to go out and say, oh, this is a driver's car, and you feel super connected with it because you really don't. But I like the way I feel sat in this car. I like the big windshield. I like the small steering wheel. It's nice to just be in something that feels small and agile. But also, it's very efficient. 41.6 MPG, don't you know? Let's turn our cruise off. Let's do this next section of highway in EV mode. Why not? back into B and we will jump back into EV mode. We still have 83% charge remaining, so we'll use the rest of that. I'm curious to see EV power only merging because when you have the full 220, merging is no problem at all. But what is it like to merge with 90 horsepower? I guess we'll see. Lanes open, this is flat out, up to 70, no problem. I did for a second think that semi was about to crush me. I do have an urge to weave traffic in the Prius, I will be honest. Should we join this Accord? What do you guys say? I don't think I can catch him any of you. This is flat out. <laughs> This is the perfect car for commuting. I mean, that is, this is the car. I, uh, if, if your sole purpose for having a vehicle is just to commute, then I, I mean, this is, this is the car to have. This is nice. And if you care a little bit about driving, I think you'll like the Prius. I, I, I'm, I'm being 100% honest here. I have no reason to make up things about this car. It's just, it's a fine thing. The infotainment is in reach. That's important. That's something I meant to say earlier. The infotainment's in a good spot. You don't have to reach super far away. I kind of like this because it's a car. I appreciate that things still exist that aren't SUVs. I mean, look at this. SUV, SUV, SUV. Grandpa in his Lincoln MKS. SUV, SUV, SUV. Everything on the road now is an SUV. I mean, look at that parking lot over there. It's solid SUVs. So if you want something... That's a little bit different still. The Prius is different. The Prius looks awesome now. So that's another reason to have one. Overall, I've had a great commute this morning in the Prius. No real complaints. Um, rear visibility. Luckily, they give you a camera rear view mirror, so whatever. Rear headroom, eh. Just drive people that are under six foot. You won't have a problem. All right, let's back this thing into a spot. We'll show you guys the parking situation here. Prius. Love that quick steering rack. Pretty good camera situation here. I mean, this is a small car regardless, but it's always nice to have that added confidence when placing your vehicle. Electronic parking brake, but nine times out of 10, it just sets itself automatically. You don't even have to worry about it. And that'll wrap it up for us today. Thank you guys all so much for coming along with me on my commute this morning in the new Prius Prime. Let's play the first note to Jingle Bells. And we will go inside and do some photography. Comment below if you have any questions here about the Prius Prime. I'll do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, though, thanks again for watching. Let me know what you think about the new Prius. 
and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.